It's amazing to be talking to you guys. I watched the documentary Catfish in 2010 with my jaw on the ground, like, like we all were. Um, and here we are all these years later. I, I first want to ask you, Neve, you know, after more than a decade, are you continually surprised when you find out what's happening or, or are you a little bit ahead of the game now? I, I mean, I, I think safe to say that some of the shock value has worn off uh, in some cases. Um, but I, 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 I was talking to Cameo about this the other day, you know, a lot's changed uh, socially um, in the last 10 years, certainly technologically, and it continues to change sort of quicker and quicker. And so new new scenarios new situations new experiences new interactions like it's it's constantly changing um and and the things that people think of and and the you know the ways in which they deceive or, or are deceived i think is infinite so there's there's always something new and different and interesting and even if just geographically where we're going um the show is never the same twice so it just keeps it really interesting yeah, no, it definitely does. And I was also interested, you know, Cami, you're like the perfect sidekick, you know, to, to Neve, you know, you sort of bring in a little skepticism. Um, yeah. I'm curious, have you ever experienced some sort of deception, you know, before you arrive at the show? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I certainly, <laughs> certainly have. Um, you know, I like to say that we can get catfished in real life by people that we know, and it doesn't just have to be on the internet. So I definitely have been in situations where, um, you know, in particular, one really long friendship that I had where the person lied to me about everything from, you know, faking an engagement to where they were traveling wow. and like talking to me as if they were on, you know, a, a different time zone when they really were yeah, down the street. It was chaos it was it was insanity um wow. and i really think that that situation prepped me for this show <laughs> because now i i i don't know if it's you know i'm cynical or what i don't know what it is but now i don't i don't believe anything <laughs> i don't believe anything or anyone um so yeah but it can happen it happens and you know we we get we get deceived all the time when we love people and care about people it doesn't just have to be romantic relationships either um, cause that was just a friendship and it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. Was it online? Was it through technology or was it sort of a real life type? Thing? No, this was like a friendship from my childhood <laughs> of 11 years. <laughs> oh. Yes. Wow. It was, it was shock. It was shocking. It was the most, it was the most insane deception. I think that I hope to ever experience in my life. Um, it was, it was scary. It was very, very scary. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that explains a lot. So yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. nobody. Yeah, no, I, I believe you. Um, and it's interesting. I know when you first started the show, especially when you did the, did the documentary, nobody knew, you know, who you were, but now do you find it's to your disadvantage or an advantage, or does it matter that they, they know who you are when you guys show up? I, oh, I think that the reputation of the show continues to proceed itself at, in a beneficial way. I, I think because the show has consistently shown that it is here to help and create safe spaces for people to experience difficult things and, and not be judged and, and be shown compassion, like it continues to sort of um, self-perpetuate it. I don't, there's a term there I can't remember, but like as long as the show is doing what it does and, and doing it, you know, with integrity, people in these situations will continue to um, submit themselves to, to be on it. Um, and I think that speaks a lot to the volume, uh, speaks volumes to the quality of the show. Um, because if we, I think if we weren't doing a good job, uh, people wouldn't want to come on uh, and, and, and be vulnerable with us. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you speak to, when you mentioned the vulnerability, um, I think that's a very important part because you always have these moments where you're almost like therapists, you know, in a way, how do you kind of work, especially with the two of you sitting there with the person, 
how do you know what to say, the right thing to say and at the time? I mean, I think the good thing about Neve and I's chemistry is we, we kind of know how to bounce off of each other and we work in tandem, but then at the same time, sometimes we have different opinions. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, he'll think one thing and, and I'll come in with another, but both opinions are respected and, you know, heard um, because the person themselves might have differing of views or opinions and they themselves haven't figured it out yet. So just giving each perspective, I think is always important. Um, but we don't, I mean, we, we do our recaps, you know, you'll see us in the car on our way to talk to them or, you know, coming back and we'll kind of be like, okay, how do we want to, how do we want to go about this? And it, it also depends on the person. Like if we're dealing with somebody who is super sensitive, then we might take a different kind of approach than if we're dealing with somebody who is a little bit more of a realist. Um, and you know, decide how we're gonna deliver bad or good information. Because sometimes if we have good news, on our show, good news isn't always good news. Like sometimes if it's good, there's usually something else going on and we have to make sure that we also introduce that, that perspective. It's like, yeah, it might be the person that you're talking to, but if it's been five years and they haven't you know, come forward to meet you or made any plans to actually get to know you in a, in a real way, then is it really a good relationship? So I think we do a good job at, at trying to balance both. Yeah, and I think it also helps that even though I wish we had more time, um, we try to spend time with these people and, and not necessarily rush through things. And even the fact that we travel with them uh, and sit with them on the plane and drive with them in the car from the airport to the hotel. Some, I mean, those scenes don't often even get in, make it. I mean, sometimes we're not even filming or we're filming it just like on one little, because we haven't, like, we, we'll land, we don't have any cameras set up, we'll just take a GoPro and go in the car. Like, I think that a little bit of sort of bonding and, and friendship that we're able to establish off camera, whether it's a, a meal or whatever, like definitely helps give us some insight and, and helps them lower their guard a little bit so that we can better um, read them and, and try to sort of see where they're at. Yeah, no, and, and, and it does seem like you really do form a, a bond with, with everybody involved. Um, mm -hmm. I love the, the follow-up though. Because it's always another element of surprise, like, oh my God, yeah. we're get together. Yeah. Um, how, like, before we see you talking to that person, how much communication do you have leading up to that? And, and do you keep in touch after, or, or is it just pretty a brief follow up? I don't think we usually don't have one on one personal contact. Um, Sometimes after the episode airs, though, we we will. Mm -hmm. But our team and everyone behind the scenes at the show keeps in contact and finds out what happens. But I think we like being surprised, too, because sometimes, yeah. you know, even when we had the virtual episodes, when it would come up on the screen and be like, they stopped talking or they kept, I would always look forward to that because I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> how did it end? Yeah. Um, or if we find out that they have met up, we're like, send us a picture. Like we want to see. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, don't, we have an ep don't we have right. an episode this season where the two people are, and are, are together? Yes. When we, do, when yeah. we followed up with and them. We were shocked. Yeah. We were like, what? <laughs> so that's always, it's always nice to not, I guess, to not keep in touch and just let them <laughs> Because it's it's better, honestly, we enjoy after we've brought yeah. people together to just like be hands off and be like, okay, now you guys, let's see, let's see where this can go without us here. Because it's, it's weird. This is not a normal way to meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. You know, and I'm also interested in like, let's say somebody's like, okay, I'm not who I said I am. And then, you know, time passes. Can you think back, is there a percentage or, or number of people that they find out they've been deceived, but then they stay together or is that, it does not. Yeah. yeah, no, we've had, we've had that a few times. We have one couple that the guy totally catfished the girl, but they still fell in love and now they have a kid together. I think they're still together together. I don't, maybe even more than one kid. I don't even know. Um, and we've had a few other, I mean, other examples that didn't necessarily end up with marriage and children, but where people we're able to kind of look past it and, and stay in touch and then either date or not date, but definitely stay in contact. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Um, I, I do have to ask about this season. I, I did get a little preview of it and it was, I, I, I've been watching you forever and I was like, Oh my God. Um, so what can you tease about this season that we can look forward to? I mean, this is our first 
full season back on the road, which is very, very exciting. It feels like we're back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, we realized that Neem and I actually filmed more episodes during the pandemic together than outside. So just like us being able to bond and um, be together, it, it adds to the show because you know, the closer we are off screen, the closer we could be on screen, the more in sync that we could be. So that's really, really exciting. I think that's, that's something that people yeah. are going to be. And with. obviously I know we, we, we mentioned it already, but Max making yes. a, an appearance is a, yeah. is a big, uh, you know, a bonus I think for everybody um, this season. Um, and what else? I mean, I, I just, I think just traveling, being back on the road, um, mm -hmm. getting into trouble, you know, peering through windows, <laughs> Knocking um, on doors. <laughs> I keep waiting to get pulled over. I, I keep waiting someday to get like stopped by the police for something. Well, that one it's girl never... did call the cops on us. We we did oh, get yes, the that's cops right. called on us this season. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that'll make the episode <laughs> or not, but well, that's a team. I hope so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I always wonder too, like when you go to knock on the door, like I'm like, <gasps> you know, do you feel sort of like a little bit of jitters wondering who's gonna open the door? I do. I mean, I think if I think if I were like alone and it, you know, in a strange place, but you know, I've got people with me. I've got my my crew, you know. So yeah. Um I don't know. I think part part of what makes me uniquely suited to host the show is that I sort of don't have uh that reflex when when approaching strange and unusual situations i do i stay far <laughs> away <laughs> you guys are a good a very good balance uh you know i do have one like interesting question just you know as as a parent i mean, i know you've got little ones but are you like super paranoid once they're on you know the computer or like how do you feel about that going forward i mean i think i'll just always make sure to do a full background check on anybody that they interact with you know they they should they'll just know if you, if you meet someone on the internet just come to dad let him do his thing yeah. <laughs> run the numbers let him do his old man pictures. thing <laughs> and uh you know if everything looks good then we're, we're all set okay yeah because that is our new world though you know our kids meet friends online yeah. and, and and that is what happens so it's I would think in your position you'd be a little bit more, a little bit more nervous. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the same time though, like it, meeting a stranger on the internet and getting catfish was the best thing that ever happened to me. That's true. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to limit. That. Uh, you know, I think people need to they need to have their own experiences and make their own mistakes. I don't think my future kids are going to be using the internet. I don't think yours are either, Cami. I think <laughs> you're going to be like the lock on the computer. <laughs> no, I think we're going to have a family computer like what I grew up with. But I was still oh in chat God. rooms catfishing right. lying about my age yeah yeah no i i hear you i hear you well the, the season looks bananas and we cannot wait it does feel very normal which is awesome to see so thank you so much for your time today you guys and i uh, can't wait for this season <laughs> <laughs>